Putin is, is kind of serious this time and he's ready to go in. And, and that's really, uh, you know, he's pushing. He's, he's, he's clearly unhappy with the status quo. He's unhappy with the status of the Minsk and Normandy peace uh, talk. He's unhappy that Ukraine is be, being rearmed by the West uh, and he wants something different, right? And, and I think yesterday in the summit, Biden didn't really give him anything. So, so the ball's back in Putin's court, effectively. As we look at the coalition against Putin at this stage, would you say it's changed and is stronger uh, since uh, 2014? I mean, clearly uh, there were opportunities to stiffen resolve and yet Nord Stream 2 continued to be constructed. You felt that there were Western European countries that were rather reluctant to uh, stick to some of the uh, stiffer terms of resistance. Um, what about now? I don't think it's, well, quite interesting. If you go back three weeks, I would have said weaker. You know, the West is, is struggling with democracy. The Biden presidency, I don't think is a, a particularly strong one at this point in time. Uh, Ukraine itself politically is, is quite challenged. So this idea is what is Putin up to? Uh, there's a great opportunity for Putin, you know, if he wants to go in and change the status quo on the ground. It's kind of now... But what's changed in the last couple of weeks uh, is remarkable in a way that the French and the Germans, some of the continental Europeans were very sceptical about US intelligence and about Russia. I mean, they, they, were willing, they wanted to talk to Putin more. But actually, uh, US intelligence seems to have shared uh, information with uh, its allies that has done a 180 in terms of uh, where their position are now. You know, they're all ally, aligned behind Biden in this, this pretty tough sanctions response. So, so what was in that intelligence must have been absolutely compelling. The Americans must have been telling its allies in Ukraine that Putin is poised to strike and we need to do something now. Timothy, what do you make of the timing, though? Because uh, we're at a, this point where Putin and Russia want something from the West. Uh, they want the uh, ready uh, client for this Nord Stream 2 product that they've invested a lot of time and money. So why the timing now? Look, Putin wants Ukraine. <laughs> Nord Stream 2 was a way to circumvent and weaken Ukraine because Ukraine is a gas transit country, earns revenue from it. Uh, and if, you know, Ukraine also, if... Putin is dependent on transiting uh, gas through Ukraine. He's, he's less willing to cause a conflict if he has alternative uh, energy supply routes. So um, I wouldn't focus too much on Nord Stream 2. Timing from Putin's perspective, you know, it's 30 years today since the, the treaty that ended the Soviet Union. Uh, Putin's big on history. Uh, these next few months are, are pretty critical. P Putin, you know, it, it's, a, it's now about his place in history. Ukraine is central to that. In July, he wrote a big essay about the fact that the Ukrainian and Russian peoples are one. Uh, and I think it, we're at a very, very difficult time. And uh, for lots of different reasons, I think it's kind of now or never for Putin in terms of whether he decides to do something very significant in Ukraine uh, to fundamentally change that relationship. I mean, in the end, I think he wants a new treaty with Ukraine to pull Ukraine back under its sphere of influence. You know, and, and that, that seems to be his red line. And the question is, what is he prepared to do to get that? Hi, I'm Joanna Bersacci, and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.